AI voice callers have recently exploded in popularity, enabling realistic sounding, quick to respond phone callers to handle inbound and outbound calls. Hey, welcome to Inflate. What can I help you with? My name's Brendan. I'd like to book a call on Monday for 2 p.m. Hold on a sec. And your call on Monday at 2 p.m. has been booked. One of the biggest challenges of these systems is how quick they respond to the user. In this video, I will go through several ways that you can improve the speed of your AI voice callers. This includes which voice provider to choose, how you should prompt your voice caller, and various other settings such as delays and timeouts. My name is Brendan and I run Inflate AI, where my team and I help businesses integrate the latest AI solutions. I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and dived into the AI space with the release of ChatGPT, identifying the significant impact that this technology would have on business. Businesses. The platform that I will use in this video is called Vapi.ai. This is a platform that I've been using quite a lot recently due to its quick response time and various developer tools. Don't worry if you are using another platform as most of these steps are transferable across different platforms. And don't worry if you're not technical, I've designed this tutorial to be super simple to follow along with. This is a critical step to learn if you're looking to sell AI voice callers to other businesses or if you're looking to integrate AI into your own business. If you do want to get access to 20 plus chatbot and automation templates, you can go ahead and sign up for my complete free school community which is linked in the description so jumping right into it this is the vapi.ai platform which once again you can go ahead and sign up using my link in the description and once again if you are using a different platform a lot of these systems have similar toggles and similar features that you can use to get the same effect that I'm going through but just for the purpose of this video I'm going to be sticking to vapi just to give you a quick rundown on how to actually build an assistant on vapi if you aren't familiar with the platform it's a very simple process essentially all we do is we instruct the assistant on how to act how to respond using something called a prompt which is input in this model section here we're just telling it this is the first message that you should say and then below this we have a system prompt which is just a set of instructions that we provide to the assistant and it's able to actually put all of this together by itself to create the assistant if you would like to learn more about how to actually build an assistant on vapi more in depth going to all of the features and functions of this platform I do have a two hour video covering everything that there is to know about the VAPI platform. So I do recommend watching that video first and then watching this video so you actually understand exactly what I'm walking through. So getting started, one of the key metrics that VAPI actually provides us with is actually the latency of our assistance in milliseconds. So this is super helpful for us to actually understand the changes that we make and whether those changes that we make are actually making an impact to the latency of our system. So this latency uh, is essentially the delay in which we ask a question to the AI voice caller and how quickly it's able to respond. So at the the moment at my current setup that I have it says 850 milliseconds here is the average response time now once again if I hover this these calculations are estimates so we can't really guarantee that it's going to be that speed every single time it might be a lot slower it might be a lot faster there are a lot of variables that come into play as to how quickly the system can respond and I'm going to be going through all of that. You'll also notice that this latency is essentially added up between four different areas and these areas I'll cover as well. So the first page here is the model and the model is pretty much the main section that you're going to be using to instruct it, uh, instruct the assistant to essentially act the way you want it to and change some of the most fundamental settings. So this is really what's going to shape our assistant uh, to be how we want. If I just go over to the right hand side of the screen here, these settings here contribute a lot to the latency of our system. So if I just go back up to our latency section here, this blue part is essentially our model and how much latency is contributed from our model. So just by hovering over this, it says that our current model GPT 3.5 Turbo gives us a latency of 250 milliseconds. So this particular model is causing 250 milliseconds of delay on our system. So if I just go down to the model section here, we're using GPT 3.5. So this is a model which is the quickest model released by OpenAI. OpenAI is the creator of ChatGPT, you've probably heard of them, uh, and they've got some of the most advanced models currently on the market, and I'm currently using their quickest model. So GPT 3.5 is their quickest model, uh, and you can see here that's 250 milliseconds. If I go back to the model settings and change this to GPT 4.0, which is a new model that was released, you may have heard about. This is a model that is slightly slower than GPT 3.5, but supposedly more advanced than GPT 3.5. So there is actually uh, other things to think about when we're looking at latency. We can get quicker responses, but in this case, quicker responses means not as advanced answers, not as well thought through answers, uh, because the model is obviously not thinking through it as long as something like GPT 4. So if I go ahead and swap it to GPT 4 Turbo, this is a quicker version of the GPT 4 model, which isn't available on VAPI at the moment, but GPT 4 Turbo is essentially just a better model uh, compared to GPT 4. Selecting that, we can see that our latency goes all the way up to 800 milliseconds. So a significant difference from obviously our GPT 3.5. Simply by swapping these models, we've gone from 850 milliseconds as the average response time up to GPT 4 Turbo at 1400 milliseconds. So this is 
Probably one of the biggest factors that contributes, especially if you're using the GPT-4 Turbo model, that contributes to the latency. We can see here on this latency graph that if we select GPT-4 Turbo, that is contributing a essentially majority of the latency uh, for the caller. So if you are looking for the quickest response possible, going ahead and selecting GPT-3.5 if you are using OpenAI as a provider is going to get you the quickest response. Now we can also change the provider. So we don't have to use OpenAI. We can go down to something like Rock and use a different model. And obviously the capability of the response and of the language model is going to be completely different and the latency is going to be different as well. So you do really have to test what works best. I would recommend staying with OpenAI as they do have the most advanced models currently on the market uh, and they're updating things quite frequently. So I'm going to stick to OpenAI personally, but obviously you can test through all the different options that they provide uh, and find out what suits your project the best. Scrolling down a bit, something that can affect the latency is the maximum amount of tokens. So think about tokens as essentially the amount of characters or words uh, that the assistant can output at once. So if we set our max tokens to 250, this is the max amount of tokens that it will generate. So essentially, if we reduce this to something like 50, the amount of words and characters that the system or the assistant is going to output uh, at once is going to be significantly less. So if we have an assistant that we want to output a very small amount of information at a time, we can restrict how much info the bot is talking about or how long the sentences are uh, at once. And this is going to help obviously make quicker responses. If we increase this to something like 500, obviously the responses are gonna have a lot more tokens, a lot more characters, and this is gonna cause the assistant responses to be longer and in that case, it's going to have obviously more delay. If it's got a huge paragraph of information that it needs to output to the user, that is just going to take time to not only generate, but then repeat back to the user as well. So there is significant latency implications when increasing this figure. Jumping over to the prompt in the middle of the screen here, this is something that does deeply affect the latency of the system as well. So as you can see here, I've got a prompt already written up for uh, an inbound assistant for Apple. So it's simply something you call up to get technical assistance for Apple products, uh, just a fake system I quickly created. And the reason I have a structure for this prompt is that we need to clearly communicate to the AI or the assistant exactly what we're looking for. So prompting really does affect uh, how quickly the model is able to identify exactly what it should output. I do have a video on exactly how to prompt uh, AI callers. I've got a prompt engineering for AI callers video, which you can check out if you want to learn more about prompt engineering. But ultimately, your goal for prompting these assistants is to try and effectively communicate to the system exactly what you're looking for. So in this case here, you'll see that I've got several headings for exactly the type of information that I'm talking about. I've got examples, I've got notes. Uh, and the reason that I've done this entire structure here is because I need to clearly obviously communicate exactly who the bot is, what their task is, what their goal is. We've got example inputs. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing this is because if the bot is not exactly clear on what to output, there is just an extra bit of processing that it's going to have to do to think about exactly what the right response is. Uh, in this case, it's either going to obviously be very slow because it's trying to figure out what it needs to output, or it's just going to go ahead and output the completely wrong thing because it wasn't able to figure it out in time and it just gave you an answer that wasn't correct. So prompt engineering is something that is really, really important. Once again, that's why I created a separate video on this, but you really got to make sure that your prompt is as effective as possible and that your prompt is clearly communicating exactly what you're looking for. So in this case, you can see here, I've said, you are an experienced salesperson for the technology company, Apple. Your role is to help customers purchase our products. So I've done this to identify who they are. So the bot knows who it is. Uh, it knows exactly what its role is. So that in this way, it's now got a bit more context on exactly why it's saying what it's, what it's saying. Next to this, we have task. So what they actually do. So this is saying your task is to converse with the customer, find their needs, solve their pain points and sell them our products. So this is just telling the bot, this is what you do. So now it has more context as to uh, exactly what it's doing. And this is really just going to shape uh, the answers. When somebody asks a question, it now knows this is my purpose. I am, I am meant to be helping these customers. I work for Apple. I'm an experienced salesperson. So not only should I help these customers, but maybe I should try to sell them some products as well. And so these additional bits of context that we provided with as to exactly why it's doing what it's doing is obviously going to help to make it a better assistant. For this particular assistant, I also wanted it to follow a sales script. So in this case, being able to plan out a sales script in the example section of this prompt is actually a really good thing to do to get it to respond quicker. So in this case, if we've planned out an entire sales script for it to follow along with, if somebody answers their question exactly how it said in the script here, it immediately knows exactly how to respond uh, based on this example bit of dialogue and script that we provide it with. So you can imagine that the AI has obviously a lot less work to do if it's got a script and knows exactly what the next thing it should say is. 
the latency is going to be substantially less because it's not thinking of response. It knows the response. We've told it what to respond with. And we can obviously go ahead and just take that response from here that we've given it and it will output it as quickly as it possibly can. But obviously, if you don't have an exact script that you want it to follow along with, giving it the role, the task specifics, and all of that context about why it's doing what it's doing is going to give you that level of conciseness to communicate to the assistant so that you can then go ahead and reduce that latency and get a much quicker assistant. So the next setting that we have here on VAPI is the transcriber model. So when we're calling these assistants and we're talking to the assistant and we ask a question, our question is essentially an audio file that needs to be transcribed into some text so that it can then be sent to the AI to obviously understand what we're saying and then generates its response and then output it to us. And so the transcription model is essentially the platform that is taking it from an audio file to text. And so this process obviously uh, takes time to do. So this is where some latency can be introduced. And as we can see here with the current setup that I have, if I go ahead and hover over the latency, we can get see 100 milliseconds of latency using the platform that I'm using for transcription. In this case, I'm using the DeepGram provider that VAPI provides, but we can also swap this over to something called TalkScriber. TalkScriber is significantly uh, higher in latency. So we can see here, TalkScriber has 500 milliseconds of latency, significantly higher. Here with latency, uh, but if we go to DeepGram, it goes down all the way to 100. So once again, it will just depend on your use case and testing whether or not TalkScriber or DeepGram works for your particular use case. And the reason that this matters for your use case is because obviously when you are asking certain words, you want it to actually translate that word correctly. DeepGram's Nova2 model actually has a series of different industries that we can choose from. And the reason they have a whole series of different industries to choose from is because there are words that sound similar to other words depending on what you're talking about. So they've got a Nova2 medical model. And the reason you'd want a medical model is because maybe you're saying a word in the medical industry that sounds similar to a word that is just general English, for instance. So obviously if we're talking about something to do with some medical issue uh, over the phone and we're telling them about some particular word uh, that is not commonly used in the English language, uh, but it is used particularly in specific medical scenarios, we want to make sure that our model is actually trained to pick up on the right words and actually look for those words more specifically because we don't want to miss out on them. So using these different types of models here, it doesn't look like they increase latency really at all. So obviously really just depends on the system uh, and a system that you're building and how well it's able to actually capture uh, different words depending on what that conversation is going to be about. They've also got transcription for different languages. So if you're using a different language, I would recommend changing the transcriber model to that particular language. Jumping into the voice settings here on VAPI, this is going to be another factor that contributes quite heavily to the latency of our caller. So if we look back up in the latency section here, this yellow section is our voice provider that we're using, which is contributing 400 milliseconds of latency on this particular voice provider. So obviously depending on the AI model that we choose, this voice provider can be significantly greater than the AI model. So in this case, I'm using a platform called 11 Labs to generate my realistic sounding voice. This is probably one of the most popular platforms out there at the moment. So one thing that you can do to go ahead and obviously reduce this amount of latency is just changing the voice provider. So I am using 11 Labs for most of the builds that I'm doing, mainly because of the realism that it provides. I find that it obviously outweighs uh, the latency and obviously the better it sounds, people will be more likely to think it's realistic than obviously if it sounds directly like a robot. But if you are looking to get the quickest response possible, using a model like Azure gets you a lot quicker. If we go down here, now down to 200 milliseconds. So now our assistant is down to 650 milliseconds. Uh, average response time down from 850. So once again, we're reducing this further. We're using a model like this, which doesn't really sound as good as 11 labs. Uh, so you really do have to play around with it and really weigh up the consequences of if I use a worse model that is quicker, uh, is it worth it uh, in the long run? Or if I use a model that is slightly slower, uh, is it worth it to get that extra bit of realism? So it's something you need to weigh up on. Uh, it's not really the easiest choice to make, but obviously you can run tests uh, depending on what you're doing. If you're running inbound calls, um, it might be fine to do a model like Azure where it's not as realistic sounding because people are calling in. Uh, and if you're clearly telling them that's an AI uh, and that's the way you want to approach your system, then it's completely fine uh, and you might be able to save on a little bit of latency. Now choosing different voice providers gives us different settings on how we can actually manipulate how that voice is being said. If you're using 11 labs, unfortunately we don't get a speed uh, sort of gauge to change how slow or how fast we want the responses to be. But if I go ahead and change this to once again Azure, this we actually get an option to change the speed of the voice output. So we can make this super slow or we can actually make it really fast. 
Now this is just changing the speed of the caller. It's not actually changing the sort of delay. So if we ask the question, it's still gonna have that 650 millisecond delay, but obviously in how quickly it actually outputs the text that it generated. So this setting is purely just changing the speed of how quickly it's actually talking and not how long it takes to respond to the question. So just scrolling down a bit in these settings, go down to pipeline configuration and one setting you'll see is the response delay. So this is directly contributing to obviously the delay in the response. It says here, the minimum number of seconds the assistant waits after user speech before it starts speaking. So this is just uh, how long it waits uh, to start speaking after the user has. And in this case, the best thing to do is just to set that to zero. We want that to be as quick as possible. And by setting that to zero, we can have it respond immediately. Uh, by any reason that you want to increase this, you can increase that to two seconds. Uh, but obviously I wouldn't recommend that. Having that as low as possible is going to be as best as possible. Below the setting, we've got the large language model request delay. The minimum number of seconds to wait after punctuation before sending a request to the large language model. So in this case, once again, setting that to zero is just gonna make it a quicker model. We obviously want our answers to be sent to the large language model and pull back from the large language model as quickly as possible. So making sure that there are no uh, intermediary delays set by us. So obviously if you wanna set that to three seconds, you can, but I'd recommend going down and setting that to zero just so we can get that as quickly as possible. Now just below the setting, we've got interruption threshold. So it says here the number of words the user must say before the assistant considers being interrupted. So when we're talking to these assistants, we can actually interrupt uh, the speech. So if the assistant is talking about something and we decide that we change our mind, we want it to say something different and we talk while it's talking, there is a certain amount of time uh, until it actually recognizes that you're speaking before it actually initiates the interruption threshold as it says there. So in this case, it's not so much uh, controlling how long, it's controlling how many words we say. So by default, it sets itself to two. And that just means if you say two words while the assistant is speaking, it will go ahead and just stop speaking entirely and it'll be listening for what you have to say. So the default for this is at two words. Now I would recommend keeping this at two words. And the reason is you don't want it to sort of have any false triggers. So if we set this to one word, it will be quicker in identifying that we are talking while it's speaking because obviously if it hears really any sort of sound, it sounds like a word, it's gonna interrupt it and let you speak. But obviously this also causes some issues and errors if we make a sound, if we cough, uh, and it picks that up as a word, it's gonna go ahead and just interrupt the assistant immediately and that could ruin not only the realism, but obviously it's gonna be very slow to get that assistant back up and running. You're gonna to have to tell the assistant uh, you know, what's going on. Uh, it doesn't make a very good experience. So setting this to something like two uh, should be more than enough to obviously recognize that you're not speaking. Um, and obviously if they say two clear words, then it will interrupt it. Just be mindful of obviously setting it to one word. You can make it quicker, but it's prone to error. Now just below the setting, we've got maximum duration, which is the maximum number of seconds a call will last. So depending on what you're doing with your caller, if you're sending outbound calls and you wanna restrict how many sort of minutes and seconds uh, that your assistant is gonna be calling one particular lead for, you obviously want to maybe instruct it to end the call after a certain period of time. So if you only want the assistant to run for 10 seconds or 3,600 seconds, you can set um, exactly how long you want it to run for. So this is very good for limiting um, costs and being efficient in your system. So obviously if somebody starts talking to the assistant for two hours, that's going to rack up some costs. But with this feature, we can actually limit how long those calls go for. So if we want it to only go for a few minutes, we can go ahead and just set it to be a few minutes at max. Uh, so obviously if the assistant isn't quick enough in responding and as a last resort, it hasn't been quick enough, uh, we haven't got exactly to those call objectives uh, and the call is going on for too long for some reason, we can go ahead and just say, end the call um, and then just call that a loss. If you are a business owner looking to get a voice system built out for your business, whether that's inbound calling or outbound calling, go ahead and book a call with my team using the link in the description. And if you found this video helpful, I'd greatly appreciate if you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let me know in the comments below of any other videos that you're looking forward to.